it's time for another book review for this week. We'll be getting to uh, the next Nightfall video for next for uh, the week after. And this time, once again, I'll be covering one of the books that has been part of the Sword and Laser Book Club that I was able to read in time for that month's um, episodes, for lack of a better term. This would be, this would be the, the book that was the pick for June of 2021, Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Susanna Clark is the author of, jo of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I will admit up front, I have not read. And I understand that that book is kind of a mixed bag for some people. There are some people who absolutely love and adore it, and some people less so. Part of it due to prose, some of it due to pacing. Well, Piranesi is a significantly shorter book than Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. It's like almost like more of a novella than a than like the giant bullet stopper novel that that Jonathan that uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell is. But that's okay. And this is I, I like me a bullet stopper. I reviewed it. You could bulletproof a car with it. And not for, like, small caliber ammunition. You could probably I mean, stop some high caliber stuff, too. I don't know. Um, I'm not a gun guy. Um, but in any case... Piranesi is a... It's a very interesting work of fantasy. It is... A very, on one hand, it is a very first-person narrative... It means a first-person narrative story... It starts out very atmospheric and much, and very much more about a place than just um, necessarily a, like a suspenseful adventure story or that sort of thing. And it never really gets full on adventure. It shifts more into something of like a moderate level thriller for the second and third half of the story. The book is told through the journals of our narrator. He is at the start of the story, unnamed, and he was referred to by a second person who he encounters in this place that is just called The House. And he's referred to as person as just Piranesi. Our protagonist suspects that's not his name, like it's not, not his real name, but he, he, he like, yeah, whatever. And he has no memory of any time before The House. And The House is this very infinite space. It has there's an ocean which partially floods it at certain times of the day. There's seabirds, there's fish, and the building is lined with just statues all over the place. And the at the start of the story, for like the first act, is like okay, this is more about kind of like a atmospheric book a sense of place story that sort of thing it's like it's not uh i'm not gonna say a hard and fast fantasy but it's it's not a it's not a heavy fantasy where we're thinking about rules of magic or that sort of thing it's like th this is going to be like this is going to be more literary and more like character introspective is what i thought for the first about third of the book and like i wasn't i'm not sure if i'm going to dig this and then, at the end of the first act, a shoe drops that basically shifts it much more into kind of a thriller mode. Without getting into, I'm not going to get into spoilers and give away what the shoe drop is, but it's pretty significant. When that, so where that second act comes, it basically starts dropping evidence of there is something beyond the house. And dropping hints about what our protagonist's life was before the house. And when we are introduced to this other person, we are... like it, the, the book is very upfront that whoever this other person is, whatever they're about, they're up to no good. They are... And they're probably gaslighting our protagonist. Not, not probably. It's like pretty clear that I... They're gaslit. Our protagonist is being gaslit. Um, information being held for protagonist. 
Um, our, the motivations of this guy are not good. They they're, have ill intent. And... But we're not quite sure the whole picture. And once that's once we get the the shoe drop in the second act, where there's Father Protagonist past, and we start exp and the world beyond the house, we then start getting into an exploration of that as our protagonist goes through journals and starts recontextualizing stuff inside the house with what he's dug up in these journals. In, in his in his journals, going all the way back to the beginning of them, and kind of building the mystery of and unfolding the mystery of how our protagonist got here, and determining whether or not he's going to oppose the the other person and try to escape. Ultimately, again, the prose the way the prose plays out is great. The first act. Again, at the first time I read it, it was like when I initially read it, it was slow. Or I it thought it was slow. But once I got into the second half, once I things start paying out, I'm like, okay, no, it this first act is slow, but it has to be slow. It had all of this the first act is doing the heavy lifting of this is what the house is, this is what it's all about, and so here's what we need to do. Or rather, so here's what I, as the reader, need to know about the house, so forth, to get a good picture in my head of what this place is like, because that's where we're spending most of our time. And even if we don't have a clear geography, even if we don't have a drawn map in the, in the book, on the covers or anything like that, it's still necessary for us to give a good picture in our head of what this place is like so as we make our way as the story pans out we have a even if we don't necessarily have a picture in our head of who Piranesi is and what is what what he looks like or they look like um it's like he's given a dick he's referred to by a gender by with the, the masculine gender by the other person but there, there's a certain sense here of like Piranesi hasn't thought about the concept of gender. Our protagonist has not thought about the concept of gender very much. And if they decided to be gender fluid or what have you, no, decide is the wrong term. If they determined that they are gender fluid, if they determined that they are a different gender than what the, the other person has assigned to them, then that's then that's a perfectly rational thing for them to do. I mean, it would be anyway, but in the context of the story, if they if this is a revelation they have over the course of the narrative, that would um, like there would be room for that in the story as part of our character growth, and not as like a big dramatic plot point thing, but just in terms of of our character of the protagonist rediscovering and reclaiming their background. That sort of thing. So, I enjoyed the book a lot. I, again, it does not overstay its welcome, which is one of the complaints I'd encountered people discuss about Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, particularly following discussions on the sword and laser groups and that sort of thing. Like, oh yeah, that, like... I, I was always okay for a bit, but then it stuck around for too long, and I it kind of got overwhelmed, overwhelming or boring or various other adjectives for how they lost the enjoyment they were having earlier. And Piranesi does not have that problem. It's a very like after you've moved through that first act, it just goes and becomes a very brisk read. I got through it in like like about a week, maybe less. And the slowest part of that was, again, that first act. It's available in hardcover. Um, there's digital copies of it. I will make a quick note that the audiobook is one of the few audiobooks narrated by uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, um, who you may recognize from such films as uh, Doctor Strange, where he plays Mordo, or from Serenity, where he was the operative. Uh, so, and he, he's a great actor with also a great voice. So I, like, 
I am seriously considering revisiting Piranesi just for the audiobook. Because, hey, it's rare when you get an actor of that level of, of prestige narrating an audiobook and not just in the sense of a, oh, I'm locked down in COVID and during COVID and I need, you know, I need to make a boat payment for the boat I can't go to right now. That, <coughs> um, so there's that. Definitely recommend checking out links to where you can get it and various locations will be in the doobly-doo. Some of them will be affiliate links, but not all of them. Um, the ones that are will be marked accordingly. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 